here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am making a card kind of inspired by the spring weather that will be coming soon if it stops snowing here. I live in Washington State so in the springtime we do get a lot of thunderstorms and lightning and a lot of rain. So I have a paper tray ink stamp and paper tray ink has very high quality stamps and it's a stamp that I haven't used yet. I kind of ran my fingers over the image a little bit but it still sticks quite a bit to that paper so you'll see me having a little bit of difficulty uh, with the stamp sticking and the magnets coming up. But after you stamp it with the ink it doesn't seem to have too many issues. I stamped the sun in the Wild Honey and Distress Oxide ink and I'm just showing that I have this uh, chamois cloth. I'm going to get rid of the old one and use with the new yellow one. It actually looks yellow. I buy those at my local hardware store. They come in a really large uh, piece and I just cut them down to make them manageable. I, I, I think I bought several of those and I haven't even gone through my first one yet, so looks pretty good. So now I have the cloud image and it's sticking to the paper like the sun was. I'm going to use some ice spruce distress oxide inks and stamp the cloud with those. The cloud has a kind of a neat uh, texture to it. So the, some of the white from the cardstock comes through. But I'm going to restamp that just to get a more solid image. And then just the stress oxides do play nice over each other. Not a whole lot of that orange is peeking through the gray color there. Now I'm going to go in with some black soot oxide ink. And I'm just uh, feathering it around the edges, basically. And you'll see it just darkens those edges, kind of does an ombre from black to gray. Gives it a stormy kind of look, I think. Do that a couple times until I get as much black as I want on there. And clean that stamp off, too. I need to clean up that Tim Holtz uh, stamp platform. It's getting pretty, pretty dirty. Sorry, my cat is very hungry right now and I haven't fed her yet. So now I have the lightning bolts from the same stamp set from Paper Tray Ink. And I'm going to stamp those in the Gina K. I believe it's called Wild Dandelion. It's a very nice, uh, pretty yellow. Gina K stamps stamp really well. I'm very impressed by them. I'm just trying to get where I want the ink to go because they were the lightning bolts were a little longer than I was looking for, so I'm only stamping a part of them. That way the yellow doesn't go up into the cloud. So here I have a scrap piece of Nina Solar White cardstock and I'm going to stamp the image from the same stamp set from Paper Tray Ink. And I'm stamping that one in Salty Ocean. It's a very, very bright blue. Again, I just love the detail that these oxide inks give. They don't bleed or anything. I have out a blank piece and I'm going to make a frame for the front of the card and I'm going to use the Faded Jeans Oxide and Salty Ocean and a little ink blender and I'm just blending the brighter of the blue, the Salty Ocean, all the way around and I'm not trying to make it super even or anything like that, just laying the color down. I use the same foam pad for both colors. Uh, it doesn't bother me whatsoever, and I don't have any issues with the lighter blue going into the darker blue. But I do try to keep the darker blue from bleeding into the lighter blue, because the chances of that affecting the color would be more high. 
And I decided about halfway through doing this that I wanted to actually make a second card using the negative part to the frame that I'm ink blending for right now. I'm laying down the faded jeans just to darken up the edges, give it some more contrast. And I'm going to spritz some of the water down with my Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. And let it sit a little bit, let the oxide inks kind of react, and then just soak up any excess water with a paper towel. And clean off my craft mat. Since I'm using just regular Nina cardstock, I'm definitely going to heat dry that. Make sure it's good and dry before I run it through my Big Shot. And I use a very old Spellbinders uh, label. All my blog posts actually have a list of uh, just Spellbinders dies. Any one of those would work to them. It's just a search result list. In the very beginning, I was marking uh, where the die was going to be on the paper. That way I knew where to stamp the sun and the cloud and the lightning bolts. So I'm just erasing those marks. And just adding it on. I think I might be the only one left that still uses an ATG gun. But it works for me. I don't mind how big it is or anything. The glue lasts forever in it. And I've never had any issues with my cards falling apart. Or at least anybody that I've given them to has never said anything about it. <laughs> Alright, so here I'm just laying down the sentiment. And I kind of want it off-centered a little bit more to the left than the stamp images. I'm going to cut off the piece that's overlapping. And use my ATG ATG gun again to adhere it to the card panel. So I had a little bit of overlap with the front of the card on the base of the card. So I'm just cutting that off with my Tim Holtz scissors. I don't normally show me stamping the inside of the card. But with the stamp platform it's really easy because it has that open side. So I'm just aligning everything, make sure I have the right orientation and not everything's upside down or backwards or anything. And I'm stamping that in the salty, or no that's the faded jeans color, that's the darker blue color. And I wanted to add a little more color, so I thought I'd put the lightning bolts on the inside too. And using the same color as the front of the card, the Gina K. Wild Dandelion. Again, it sticks so, <laughs> so much to the card. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Go to my blog for more information and links to all products used for these cards. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you would like to see more from me. Have a great day. Bye.